Welcome to Tuesday with Terry, the podcast for getting your mind, business, and life in shape. Hosted by Terry Blachek, one of the original area developers for Orange Theory Fitness who helped launch the brand from the very beginning. He'll use his years of experience to help you shape up your mind, build strong relationships with your teams, revamp your business processes, and set down the path towards success in all aspects of your life. Good morning and happy Tuesday to everybody. Uh, It's great to have you back. I'm happy to be back and we're going to share with you some things about starting your own business. I don't know if you have an idea, you have a concept, you have a dream, a goal, something in mind. You say, man, I would really like to start my own business or I'd maybe buy a franchise or maybe I'll buy somebody else's business. But when we start thinking about that, I just want to let you know it's going to take a little bit of courage. In order to start your own business, you know, courage is when everything about moving forward kind of puts you in a standstill. It makes your feet feel like they're in cement or in thick mud and everything about your being says, don't do it, don't do it. And you do it anyway. That's courage. It takes courage to start your own business. And if you're thinking about that, make sure you know that you're going to get some signals that fly by your uh, head and some signs and some signals that say, don't do it. But if you really want to do it, you're going to have to press forward and get through that. I can remember when I had the idea, I've had multiple ideas. I had an idea of starting my own tanning business and what that tanning business was going to be like, the the tan lounge, I called it. And it was like a nightclub and we served beer and wine and champagne and it was kind of lounge. We had lounge music and it was a cool thing and we made that dream come into reality. I remember when we started Orange Theory Fitness from the very beginning and we were talking about different concepts and ideas. I'm just going to tell you it takes courage. The first thing, I just want to share with you some ideas about some things you might want to think about if you're going to try to get a business started. All of you out there that have some courage and have a great idea and say, how do I go about it? And what's the first, second, or third thing I might want to do? First thing I would tell you to do is take out a blank sheet of paper and write down the concept. What is it that you're really trying to get started? And let me ask you this question. How is it uniquely different from anybody else. Uh, We call those in the marketing uh, world, we call those USPs or unique selling propositions. Uh, But how is it uniquely different? A lot of people tell me they want to start a gym. They want to open up a gym. And I say, that's great. You know, I had the opportunity to open up a gym and I go, well, how is it going to be any different than the gym down the road or the gym down the street or the gym across the block or the fitness center, the big box national brand fitness center? How is it going to be uniquely different? But I would ask you to take out a blank sheet of paper and start writing down the concept, start writing down your pricing and think about what your pricing is going to look like. Are you going to charge uh, a competitive price? Are you going to try to underprice the competition? Are you going to try to overprice the competition. Maybe there is no competition, but is it going to be a monthly price? Is it going to be recurring revenue model where you bill everybody every month? Is it going to be a lump sum amount of money that you have to collect? Are you going to allow people to make payments? Are you going to allow them to finance? Uh, Are you going to give them interest-free programs? You see a lot of different businesses do that or run those kind of programs. Is it going to be a term type of a payment? Meaning they're going to sign up for a two-year commitment and then uh, you're going to give them a better rate the second year than you did the first year. All I'm suggesting you got to think about the pricing. You got to think about the personnel too. The number three piece is the personnel. What's the personnel going to look like? Who's going to run the the darn thing? I mean, who's going to be in charge? Is that you? Are you actually going to run it or are you just have an idea and a concept and you're going to put the money, but you really want to get the, what we call the subject matter expert to really come in and, and run that thing. Do you need uh, frontline people? Do you need um, receptionists? Do you need cleaning people? Do you need maintenance people? Do you need Uh, delivery people. I don't know exactly what your program or your product would be, but are you going to need those people and how much are you going to pay them? And if you're going to pay them, how are you going to pay them? Are you going to use a system to pay them? Are you going to do the payroll yourself? Are you going to use systems like ADP to pay them? It, It all depends, but you need to think about the personnel component and then you need to create a 
organizational chart. Now you're going to say to me, well, I'm just a small business guy. I don't really have a big company. I just thought it might be myself and my wife. Well, then you got the president and you got the vice president. I say this to people in joking many times. My wife will get a kick out of this when she listens to this. I said, I used to be the president of my own life. I, but then I got married and now I'm the vice president. As a matter of fact, today is my anniversary. It's the, uh, it's my anniversary date and uh, happy anniversary to my beautiful wife out there. <laughs> She's listening. Uh, you need to think about number four is your product and your programs. What programs are you going to be delivering? Uh, and what will you be offering? Is it going to be free? Or the first, sir, if it's a service, is it going to be free to, for people to come in and try it out? If it's a product, are you going to have a low barrier product that people can uh, buy for a low amount of money to try it? Or are you going to give away samples for people to try it? But you got to think about your program or your product and what that might look like. Number five is really your promotions and how you're going to market this thing. And how are you going to tell the community or how are you going to tell the group, uh, uh, your customer base, whether it's a one mile, whether it's a three mile, whether it's citywide, whether it's an online program, how are you actually going to get the word out there? What's the megaphone? I say, I use a megaphone. It's an older term, but what's the megaphone that you're going to use? Is it going to be a multi-channel megaphone? Are you going to talk on different channels and social media and, uh, and, uh, 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 print advertising? Are you going to use digital advertising? Are you going to be big enough to use TV and radio? Uh, are you going to be doing uh, outreach programs? And is it going to be really what I call local word of mouth marketing? You're going to expect people to tell their friends and you're going to give them an incentive to really promote this program or this service or this product. Number six is you need to think about the processes that you're going to have and how are you going to formalize those processes? Are you going to have a sales system? What's the first thing you're going to do? What's the second thing? What's the third thing you're going to do? Are you going to have opening procedures and are you going to have closing procedures? And what's the first thing I got to do when I open this, the, the, the business? And what's the second thing I need to do in the third? And when I close the business, how do I, what's the first thing I got to do to close and wrap it up for the day? And the second and third, fourth thing to do that. Are we going to have the process of payroll. How is payroll going to work? How is cleaning going to work? How are we going to greet our customers? You know, when you go into Moe's, they all say, welcome to Moe's. Are you going to have a welcome to your business greeting? Those are all the processes you need to think about. And so in essence, what we do is we call those the five P's, the pricing, the people, the product, the promotions, and the process. You put that in underneath the concept of what you're trying to do. And I'll just share with you, when I started Orange Theory Fitness for myself, I took everything that I had. This is a personal story, but I took everything that I had, all the finances that I had. I liquidated my 401k. I liquidated all of my investments. <clears throat> I ended up to be, it wasn't a lot of money, but it was about $473,000. And I put it all in to the business. And I'm going to tell you, I was nervous. I was scared and I needed courage and I needed some people to coach me along on that and say, this is what you've been waiting for, Terry, to help do your own thing. Let's go ahead and get going. But the interesting piece of that is, you know, we put $473,000, I did anyway, put $473,000 into the business. And as we got the business, the very first, uh, uh, one, my very first studio in St. Petersburg, Florida, you know, one of the questions you ask yourself, once you put all this money in and you build your first business and you buy the inventory and you get the program together and you hire the staff and you train the staff, is anybody really going to buy it? Is anybody really going to see the same value that you see in that business and spend the money to go ahead and do it? And that's what gets you really nervous. It wasn't only three or four years later, I was able to take that $473,000. I sold a group of stores in Tampa for a little over a four and a half million dollars. So I 10 x my money. I took that money and invested in Austin, Texas. And pretty soon I was able to 10, three years, I was able to 10 x that amount of money very quickly again. The reason I'm telling you is when you're putting money out there and you're investing in yourself, you really have to do the things it takes to get going. And if it's going to be, it's up to me. I wanted to share a couple other things that I think are important in starting your own business. As you decide those first couple of pieces, then I think that you really have to find a model that works. And you say, well, Terry, what does that really mean? What I'm saying is, does the model make money?
Is it a profitable business? You could be in business and do a lot of work and put forth a lot of effort, buy a lot of inventory, and you could end up either losing money or breaking even, and you don't have the capital in reserve to basically sustain that business over time until it grows, or maybe it never grows. And in essence, that model doesn't really make money. It's not a profitable model. We looked at that at Orange Theory Fitness. We were a little concerned about that at first when we took this concept and we put it in its very first studio. We said, is this even a model that can work? And so part of that is understanding uh, capital structures and having what we call a source and use of funds uh, a, a, a list. And basically what you say is if we need X amount of dollars, say you need $300,000 or you need half a million dollars or you need $150,000, every business is a little bit different. You might need a million dollars. You might need more than that. But you basically say, what are the sources that I'm going to get that money from? And then on the right hand side of that, you say, what am I going to use that money for line item by line item? And the totals on both lines should add up. So you might have a sources, you might have an SBA loan, you might have investors, you might have your own personal money that you're going to put in. That adds up to half a million dollars. If you're like me and you're opening up an Orange Theory Fitness in the early days, it cost us about a half a million dollars to open up an Orange Theory Fitness. And, you know, part of that was allocated to equipment, fitness equipment, 120000 And then how much of that was for uh, marketing and how much of that was for the construction or the build out and how much of that was for the sound system, how much of that was for the computers and the IT system that we had in there and how much of that was for the legal uh, team. You know, you're going to have to have somebody put some legal docs for you together and your sources of funds and your use of funds should all add up to be the same you also want to make sure you have some contingency money in there in case things don't go as planned and here's what i can tell you about business it always takes a little bit longer than you planned and it always costs you a little bit more than you thought always Get yourself a contingency, get 10% of your capital stack or your capital structure, your use of funds, and keep that 10% in reserve. Also, you need to put together a forecast. A forecast is saying, this is what I think we can do. How many members are we going to sell? How many widgets are we going to sell? How many services are we going to provide at what rate? And this is going to be our revenue. And then what's your expenses? What's your payroll expense? What's your rent expense going to be? What is your um, your uh, maintenance expense going to be? What is your uh, um, janitorial expenses going to be? Uh, what is your... Uh, uh, repairs going to be. I mean, it, it, it's a little out there, but I'm just saying is you need to at least look at that and say, this is what I think. And that's the budget process, right? You're creating a three-year budget and proving out the model. Once you identify that there's a model that can actually be profitable, you got to put that into reality and you actually got to get started. And then the second thing is you have to have proof of concept, meaning that can you really prove it? It looks great on paper and the numbers all are perfect. And boy, I tell you, it lines up. And by the second, third month or by the sixth month, you know, you're pouring in the money and you're living the dream and you're living like a king. But the reality is, is can you really prove that to be true? That's where I said, you know, you might invest all this money and then people go, man, <clears throat> uh, I don't really know that I value your product or your service the same way as you do. But when they do and you start selling it and you start uh, generating the income, it starts to help you believe in what you're doing. I can't tell you how important proof of concept is in for other people to believe that that is, in fact, a good business model. It's not just on paper. It's actually proving it out. And the third thing uh, that just to mention is, are you capitalized correctly? And this is, you look at the number one reason why businesses fail in America, it's because people are short on capital. We, I mean, we certainly have seen that over the COVID uh, uh, situation where people uh, had to close their business. They had to reopen their business. They had to cut back restaurants to 50%, 25%, bars were closed. And then what happens is, is to get that business back up and running, you need to have capital in reserve to be able to pay the staff to do the marketing to kind of get that restarted. 
I would remind you that you need to really take a serious look at how your business is being capitalized. Do you have the right amount of capital to get it going? And do you have the right amount of capital in reserve in order to keep it going until it becomes profitable? Some other fine points you want to be thinking about is who's your banking relationship going to be, who's going to do your books, who's your accounting, uh, your accountant of record, your bank of record. Are you, if you're going to go out and negotiate a lease, you need to get a broker. You're going to need to get an attorney involved to review your lease. I learned a long time ago from a good friend of mine, David Hardy. He said, if you don't have the money to get a good attorney, you don't have the money to start a business. I'm telling you, I learned it my experience. I went out and created an operating agreement in the very beginning that I couldn't afford. I thought I couldn't afford a, uh, an expensive or a good attorney. So I got a, and it wasn't a bad attorney. It was just a less expensive attorney that wrote an operating agreement for me for $150 an hour. So they, that's the attorneys charged $150 versus, you know, $450 or $750 an hour. And sure enough, when it came time for me to, when there was a problem with my partner, what I found out is I probably didn't have, well, I didn't have the right operating agreement. I should have spent the money early on getting a better operating agreement and a better partnership agreement. Go ahead and spend that money. You're going to have to decide who your broker of record is, who your attorney of record is, who your insurance company and provider is of record. Make sure you get that operating agreement because that is the deal between the investors and between the partners. That'll tell you how distributions are going to be made. And, you know, when things are going good, you never need an operating agreement. But when things are going bad, everything goes back to that operating agreement between the partners to say, this is how we're going to do business when we can't make a decision and we can't agree on things. One partner wants to get distributions and the other partner wants to reinvest in the business and grow the business. <clears throat> One of the most important things is goal congruency between you and your partners. Make sure you have those pieces and parts uh, talk through. You're going to need to get the articles of incorporation and your EIN numbers and register them with the state. And I know that sounds like an awful lot, but in reality, it's as simple as what's the first thing I got to do? What's the second thing I got to do? What's the third thing I got to do? So to wrap it up for you today, number one is get your concept and the five P's in place. Number two, Take a look at that forecast and make sure that the model actually works. Number three is get it started and provide proof of concept and make sure, make sure you have the right capital to sustain the business until it becomes profitable. If you ever have any other questions, reach out to my line. You can comment uh, on Tuesday with Terry. I think there's a comment section. There's a question section in there. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to start the business or you want to have a chat, love to hear what I can do to help you out with that. In the meantime, my name's Terry. I'm your friend. Go get that business started. 